Welcome back to Flick Favorites. I'm going to explain a crime, mystery, thriller film from 1997, titled, Breakdown. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. The movie opens with Jeff Taylor and his wife Amy traveling across the nation in their spelt new Jeep Grand Cherokee from Boston to San Diego. Recent financial difficulties have led them to bravely decide to move in pursuit of better prospects. A worn-out pickup vehicle suddenly appears as Jeff reaches for a bottle in the rear seat during their adventurous ride, requiring Jeff to react quickly to avoid a collision. When Jeff and Amy stop at a petrol station to refuel and get some snacks, Earl, the truck driver from earlier, unexpectedly walks up to them. Earl first compliments Jeff's automobile and then promptly criticizes Jeff for the close call on the road. Jeff extends a heartfelt apology, pleading with Earl to put the incident behind him and move on in order to prevent any additional strife. Earl leaves in a rage despite Jeff's attempts to defuse the situation, allowing Jeff and Amy to continue their trip to San Diego. They are discussing their lucky break, a startling $90,000 lottery win on a junk food purchase, and everything is going well. But when their car breaks down, their peaceful journey takes an abrupt turn, leaving them stuck in the middle of nowhere, waiting frantically for help. The signal is out of reach, so the spouse tries to contact for help but is unsuccessful. When a passing truck captures their eye, they seem to be in luck. Unfortunately, he doesn't stop and mocks them since it turns out to be Earl's truck. When he turns his automobile around to face them, it raises questions about his motives because they don't appear to be positive. As things start to become tense, a big truck stops next to Jeff's car, leading Earl to change his mind and flee the situation. The kind truck driver, Warren, offers to help the couple and examine the condition of the automobile. A brief inspection leads him to believe the car may have overheated, so he advises dropping them off five miles away at a cafe where they can use the pay phone to call a tow company. Jeff declines the kind offer and chooses to wait on the highway until the car has had a chance to cool before attempting to start it. Amy considers taking the journey to request a tow truck and picking up cool drinks to beat the sweltering summer heat. She boards the truck with Jeff's consent and leaves him in charge of the vehicle. After some time waiting on the road, Jeff gives the car another look and finds that the malfunction was caused by a few loose wires. After the wires are joined, the automobile functions once more, enabling Jeff to go directly to the diner to meet his wife. When the husband arrives at the aforementioned cafe, he is shocked to discover that Amy is not there. Jeff doesn't find a lead despite interviewing the obnoxious bartender and other customers. Jeff begins his investigation of the town after leaving a note for Amy with the bartender. He attempts to flag down the driver of a truck that resembles Warren's along the route. Surprisingly, Warren himself shows out to be the driver, but Amy is not there. When pressed, Warren maintains he has never met Jeff and denies having any knowledge of a lady. Jeff looks inside the truck, perplexed, but discovers nothing. He notices a police cruiser at that precise moment, which prompts him to ask for help. When Jeff expresses his worries, Deputy Len Carver exits the car and starts an inquiry into Warren, despite Warren's denials that he has ever met Jeff or Amy. The officer next checks Warren's truck, but after careful scrutiny, no indications of a struggle or proof connecting Warren to Amy's disappearance are discovered. Eventually, Deputy Len starts to believe Warren's version of events after taking into account the potential that Jeff may have made a mistake by confusing the two similar-looking trucks. Using examples of similar situations he has seen, he also proposes that Amy may have left voluntarily, but Jeff refuses to accept this idea because he is familiar with his marriage to his wife. Deputy Len releases Warren without providing any hard proof, leaving Jeff feeling helpless and certain that Amy was in that truck. His worry grows as he looks at countless photos of missing people at the police station, especially middle-aged ladies like Amy. As it hasn't been 24 hours since Amy vanished, the police won't do anything unless they get a call demanding money or discover proof of a forceful abduction. Jeff approaches to the bartender again, distressed and worried for the safety of his wife, hoping for further information. Unfortunately, the answers to his questions are inadequate. Jeff, who is getting more and more frantic, 
decides to demand the bartender show him the customer receipts in an effort to find out whether Amy has been to the restaurant. They engage into a violent dispute, and it gets so bad that Jeff is forced to leave the cafe by the bartender brandishing a revolver and pointing it at him. An innocent guy called Billy came forward and claims to have seen Amy, providing a glimpse of hope. Billy claimed that Amy came to the cafe in one vehicle, entered, went outside with another man in another truck. When Jeff asks for further information, Billy replies that they don't discuss such matters with him, keeping his attention locked on the bartender who has just stepped outside to keep an eye on Jeff. Billy discloses that the man led her to Route 7 along the river. Then, when Jeff begs Billy to go with him to the police, Billy calls him a moron and insists that the cops are already on the scene. Without any other options, Jeff makes the decision to take matters into his own hands and rushes to Route 7 in pursuit of Amy. When the route is blocked and he comes face to face with the armed Earl, he has a startling encounter. With Earl doggedly chasing him, Jeff immediately reverses his automobile in an attempt to flee while feeling confused. Due to two cars blocking the route, Jeff is forced to take a detour, but this leads him to a dead end. He makes a risky descent down the slope as Earl closes up, which causes his car to smash into the river. Jeff makes the decision to leave the car in an effort to get away from Earl's grasp. He effectively avoids the immediate threat by going with the flow of the water. He has managed to survive, which is what counts most in the end, even though Earl is now taking his automobile. Billy, the seemingly innocent man outside the diner, who is an unexpected member of the gang, however, suddenly captures him. Jeff learns that Earl and Billy are the ones who kidnapped his wife, Amy, and are now keeping her hostage in exchange for money. When Earl mentions junk food, Jeff suddenly realizes that he has $90,000 in their household bank account, which Amy had previously revealed. Unbeknownst to the thieves, the sum of $90,000 was only a figure the couple saw on a package of fast food while traveling. Jeff is shocked to see Warren, who also happens to be the gang's leader, as soon as he gets out of the car. He immediately gives Jeff the go-ahead to head to the town and personally deliver his request for a speedy wire transfer from his account to the bank manager. Jeff has 50 minutes to secure the money before Deputy Len wraps up his patrol, so time is of the importance. Warren warns Jeff that they would be keeping an eye on him at all times and that if he doesn't succeed, he will sometimes give him chunks of his wife. In spite of the fact that he only has $5,000 in the bank, Jeff feels compelled to go to the town's bank as Warren has instructed. The manager notices Jeff's concern inside the bank and grows suspicious, wondering whether there's a medical issue. At one point, he attempts stating the truth, but is prevented from doing so by the presence of a suspicious person within the bank. The bank manager begs him to hang tight until they bring the cash, perhaps picking up on his hints. He receives additional instructions to find a vehicle on the main road after receiving the money. Soon after, Earl shows up and demands Jeff's submission and the return of the money. Jeff wants to see his wife first, but is unable to do so since Earl is waving a gun, as a result, he is struck in the face. Jeff's hands are safely bound with duct tape, and Earl makes contact with his allies while stating that he tampered with Jeff's cars wiring at the petrol station and that his gang still plans to kill them. Jeff perseveres in slicing through the tape with the stolen sharp tool, and when Earl opens the bag, he discovers bundles of $1 notes rather than the anticipated $90,000. Earl is confined with his wrists and neck strapped to the seat, and after a furious battle, Jeff succeeds in taking control of the vehicle from Earl. He tortures Earl into telling him where Amy is by speeding up and stopping often to suffocate him. Amy is at a truck stop. As everything starts to make sense, Deputy Len appears out of nowhere and commands Jeff to halt the car. Deputy Len disregards Jeff's appeals regarding Amy's kidnapping and Earl's participation in the case because he mistakenly believes Jeff to be a criminal. Earl seizes the chance to flee the car and opens fire on Deputy Len before pursuing Jeff. But before he can damage him, the wounded cop strikes back and shoots Earl, paralyzing him. In order to help Deputy Len, Jeff requests an ambulance over the police radio before setting off to find Amy at the truck station. Jeff discovers Warren talking on the phone with Billy at the truck stop. When Earl stops talking after an hour, 
Warren tells Billy to bring Amy to his barn so they can have a vital conversation about Amy's future. Initially focused on finding Warren, Jeff's goals change after knowing where Amy is. Jeff takes advantage of the chance to ride along on the truck's base as the gang leader departs for his home and succeeds in finding cover. Warren travels a long way to get to his barn, where his son Deke and wife Arlene welcome him. Jeff seizes the opportunity to ascend the roof and enter through a window as Warren opens the barn gate to unload stuff. Inside, he realizes that Amy is not the only person the gang has kidnapped, the barn is stuffed with the items. Inside, he discovers that Amy is not the gang's sole abductee, the barn is filled with the belongings of previous victims. Shortly after that, Billy and Al show there with Amy, who is found dead as a result of the hot exhaust heat from the truck. When Jeff hears this, he is astounded, and the guys choose to bury the body. Amy suddenly wakes up, though, and realizes that she had simply slept off or lost consciousness. Amy notices Jeff's eyes looking down at her as the kidnappers are ready to lock her in the basement refrigerator. Then they take Amy downstairs and imprison her there. After the group departs for dinner, Jeff looks for tools and makes an unsuccessful attempt to unlock the basement lock. He takes a pistol from the vehicle and sneaks into the home to seek for the evil men after deciding to take more serious action. They are astonished when Jeff unexpectedly shows up at Warren's house over dinner. While holding him at gunpoint, Jeff tells Arlene his actual identity and that his wife is being kept captive in their barn. Before Jeff can convince them to follow his orders, Deke emerges out of nowhere and points a weapon at him. In order to protect his mother, the youngster claims that the pistol is always loaded. As a result, Warren and his wife order Deke to fire, but Jeff claims that the boy and the mother have nothing to do with this. Billy successfully ignores arrest as Jeff acts just in time to deflect the gunfire towards Al, Jeff holds Warren at gunpoint and compels him to unlock the cellar door before giving Arlene the order to expose what is in the refrigerator. She is horrified to see Amy inside, which confirms her suspicion that her husband was involved in the kidnappings. Warren still thinks Jeff has to be warned, so Jeff decides to lock everyone else in the basement. The husband and Amy then see a tow truck outside the house, so they try desperately to flee, but the truck key is not there. Billy comes home at the same moment and lets the evil people out of the cellar. When Amy eventually locates the key after much searching, their problems only get worse when Warren shows up with his large vehicle. The pair narrowly escapes Warren's onslaught and flees to safety before he can use all of his truck's power against them. The pair is on the road when they notice that Warren and his associates are pursuing them in their own cars. AL's car is destroyed in the accident that results from Warren losing control of his truck owing to traffic during the pandemonium of the chase. In a last-ditch effort to catch Jeff, Warren pursues him fiercely until they come to a bridge, where he finally has the upper hand. Tragically, Warren's vehicle collides with Amy's automobile, trapping her leg in the debris. Jeff runs from his automobile to face Warren head-on as they sway precariously on the brink of the bridge. An epic fight between Jeff and Warren for their lives is taking place as the vehicle dangles perilously from the bridge. Warren fastens a chain around his wrist so he may use it against Jeff as they wrestle for control. In an ironic turn of events, Jeff manages to gain the upper hand, sending Warren flying down the rocks below where he perishes. Jeff quickly ascends and helps Amy release her caught leg. When they get out of the car, they embrace one another tenderly. When they eventually focus on the person who brought about all of this agony, they are astonished to discover that he is still alive. Amy becomes so enraged by this that she causes the vehicle to crash, trapping Warren underneath it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on future videos. Leave a like to support the channel.